hope this inspires you developers to be better. No, it's not gonna inspire anybody to do better. This is early access, literally. This is the stupidest review I've ever seen in my life. Welcome back. Today we're gonna be taking a look at some one-star Baldur's Gate 3 reviews, but I'll throw in a couple five-star ratings in there just so this video is not completely negative. It's important to note that most of the reviews for Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access have been overwhelmingly positive, but there's no fun. There's no fun in that, man. Let's take a look at some of the one-star reviews, talk about it, I'll give you my opinion. And hey guys, thank you so much for helping me reach 50,000 subscribers. Next goal will be 100,000. I appreciate you guys. Um, yeah. Oh, this is awkward. Uh, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna start this video off on Steam reviews, but spend the majority of the time on the Google reviews because Google uses a one to five star rating and we wanna focus in on those one star ratings. They're kind of brutal on Google. Steam actually has some decent negative reviews of people offering constructive criticism and people that know how to really give a negative review that can actually help the game or give uh, an opinion to other people that will be respected. Uh, Google doesn't seem to uh, have that going for them on the review page. All right, let's start off with a couple of the thumbs down here the first one says currently unplayable as is just crashes constantly high hopes for when it's finished but cannot recommend playing it as is so yeah this 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 review is perfectly fine and this user obviously couldn't play the game well because it kept crashing on him or her and this is going to happen for some players out there especially with the game in early access i think larian has been working hard at fixing a lot of these issues hopefully um for those of you that it's been crashing with hopefully that's fixed by now but i would assume when the game actually releases that it will be fixed unless you're running on like a 2007 computer or something like that so yeah that's a completely valid negative review right there the next thumbs down is right here and it says this game is mind numbingly boring and infuriating. <laughs> I wish I could get a refund. Touche man. Who are we to tell him that his experience wasn't boring? I'm, I'm assuming that turn based CRPGs are probably not up this guy's avenue. So yeah, uh, not every game is going to be for everyone. This negative review says, can't recommend this product at the moment due to the patches negating everything you put time into. Played an hour in patch three to update the game to the latest and then bam, in caps lock. You've just magically lost an hour. Poof. Why? Because your saves don't carry over to the most recent patch. Let's expand and say you've created six characters and have about nine hours, blah, blah, blah. Makes all of those saves negligible. So yeah, this, this player obviously didn't do their research into Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access before purchasing it. Larian Studios has been very upfront with stating that Early Access is not for everyone and that some of your characters are in fact going to be wiped with upcoming patches. It's part of the developmental process. So yeah, this is kind of their fault. Um, I like that they at least the first line, they say can't recommend this product at the moment. Um, that's a good way to start off uh, a review for people to take it seriously. Um, if you don't mind wasting your time over and over testing this, then sure, it's great. So the reason why I don't like this sentence is because they're putting, or this person's putting words in other players' mouths saying that the people that do like testing it over and over again, that that's wasted time. And this is just not how everyone looks at it. A lot of people not only enjoy the early access experience, which is what life's about, a lot of us look at early access as a way to help Larian Studios further develop Baldur's Gate 3, which will give us a better game in the long run. So yeah, it's definitely not wasted time for everyone. All right, let's do one quick positive one and then we'll head over to the one stars on Google. Like I said, reviews are very positive overall. I wanna make that clear for anyone who might not be as familiar with this game. So I've played over 130 hours in EA so far and I have loved every second. Sure, there are some bugs and a few crashes, but that's part of what EA is about. I love hearing people say this. It's amazing online how many people treat it like it's an actual official game release. It's literally early access. The game is in development. It's refreshing to hear people say this. As a major fan of the original BG1 and 2, nothing was more exciting than being able to play this 20 years later. And when I say a fan, I mean I have played those games with my dad when I was a kid, multiplayer and single player, every year for the last 20 years. This game isn't the same, true, but the soul of it is. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this game isn't the same, I think is basically a fact here, but the soul of it is, is more of an opinion. And when we get over to the Google one star ratings, you guys are gonna see people that definitely don't think that this is true, but this is an experienced CRPG player that really enjoys it. It's nice and refreshing to see. All right, let's head over to the Google one star reviews. 
as you guys can see the average rating here is 4.2 which is pretty good for a game in early access but once again the overwhelming majority is at the top here with five star ratings and then the second highest rating is one with very little activity in three and two and even four and what that can kind of tell us is this game is probably a really good game at its core foundation a lot of people really enjoy it in fact they really love it because you don't give a game a five star if you don't love it but there's going to be a group of players which is fairly sizable that probably don't like one distinct aspect about it or one or two distinct aspects something really specific that they really don't like and they're not going to play the game because of that so let's take a look at the reviews and see what it's all about all right so the first negative review here says i've been a fan of DD &D for many a year now and started playing DD pc games back when the gold boxes came out it's pretty cool i played all of the baldur's gate line and was excited when i saw they were going to come out with a bg3 hoping they would continue the lore it had built up sadly they fell well short if at all to that lore so this is one of the most common things for a low rating with this game is that it doesn't look like it's following the ball spawn saga from baldur's gate 1 and 2 and it very well may not really follow it but there's a couple things that we can keep in mind here one we haven't really seen the game yet and we don't really know what the hell's going on we know there's the absolute and the mind flares and all that but it's kind of really confusing and larian studios also said before that the center of the plot is being hatched by none other than the dead three which is bane ball and merkel so for all we know ball might end up playing a really really big part in this game and it might link us back to the originals quite a lot we we really just don't know so i think it's a little bit too early to assume that it's going to have nothing to do with the ball spawn saga also a couple other things to consider is that Baldur's Gate 1 was heavily based on the ball spawn and ball and all that stuff while Baldur's Gate 2 focused more on Irenicus, John Irenicus. You were still playing as the ball spawn and the Throne of Ball DLC came out which kind of concluded the ball spawn saga but the focus of the game was on John Irenicus and it wasn't even in Baldur's Gate. So Baldur's Gate 2 kind of strayed a little bit from the ball spawn saga I guess you could say and we don't know what Baldur's Gate 3 is going to do in fact we're headed towards the city of baldur's gate and baldur's gate 3 right now and we might even spend an entire act or more in the city itself maybe act 2 is just uh, mostly about the city of baldur's gate which might provide even more links back to the originals one and two the point is we don't really know for sure maybe it does not really come close to the ball spawn saga from baldur's gate one and two and if you just really don't like that okay i can respect that but what i would recommend doing if you really 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 are nervous or just hate that the ball spawn saga is not being continued is just forget about the name of the game who, who really cares it's just text on the menu screen you can call it kermit the frog 3 for for all i care <laughs> and just play the game as a different game and enjoy it as a different DD experience if it doesn't pull through with the lore that you wanted there can still be a lot of great lore in DD. the ball spawn saga is not the only thing i don't know i'm staying optimistic about it i'm excited to see the links that to the originals that they provide in the future just a couple things to think about if you're looking at 5e DD, well you get part of it here but hell you can play a horrible game called sword coasts legends and get the same amount of 5e it gives you i haven't played sword coast legends so i can't really compare the two they do not offer all the classes for section and when it comes time to choose which archetype you get two choices not even the best choice so this is not, this is almost an irrelevant statement for anyone that has been paying attention to baldur's gate 3 news we know we're going to get most likely all of the classes in the fifth edition players handbook and also most of the subclasses if not all the hunters obviously going to be a little bit different because they're they're changing it a little bit so it doesn't really make sense to even point this out um i mean it's it's just known information that the game is not even close to being finished right now so there's going to be things that are missing if you're going to claim to be 5e then be 5e so this is a little bit exaggerant in my opinion although i understand what he's talking about and i think that debates can be had here but overall the game is based on fifth edition dungeons and dragons like a lot of it is larian studios has changed certain things for better or for worse and they're testing things but i mean it's i think they have the right to call it a game based on 5e in my opinion i bought the game with high hopes and basically found that it was destiny 3 with a bg3 label slapped on 
Um, I don't think you've ever played Destiny 3, and I'm gonna assume that you're talking about Divinity Original Sin 2, maybe. And uh, there can be debates had behind that as well, although there are similarities. There's always gonna be similarities for the most part when a company makes another game. Um, they have their own style. I think they're using the same engine, so there is similarities to Divinity Original Sin 2, but there's also a lot of differences and people that usually hop on the dos 3 train just ignore all of the differences and they just want to be hyped to be negative about something the next one star review says this game doesn't deserve the title okay we already talked about all that stuff all right so here we go it's turn-based instead of free live action combat so this is another point that a lot of lower ratings bring up and I, I understand it. If you don't like turn-based combat, you're not gonna like Baldur's Gate 3. And if you played Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, and you, you love the real-time with pause combat, and you don't like turn-based, and Baldur's Gate 3 comes out as only turn-based, you can't play the continuation of, of, of your, your series. It, it really sucks. I, I understand that 100%. So if that's one reason why you're not gonna play Baldur's Gate 3, you know, good on you. If you don't play turn-based, but you haven't really given it a chance before, I encourage people to try it. I used to hate turn-based combat. And then one day I just said, what the hell? Let me really give it a try. Try to stay open-minded. I ended up really, really loving it. I didn't expect to like it. So. You know, this kind of sucks for people that liked real time with pause combat and now they're stuck with turn based. I get it. I get it. If you revert back to save because a battle didn't go your way, you can find yourself fighting the same six enemies for 30 minutes to an hour. Um, yeah, some of the fights are kind of long right now. That can definitely be talked about and improved. You can only have four companions in your party, which is a drag. A lot of people do want six. That This goes back to other CRPGs, especially Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. And I understand that. I find this to be restrictive as you really need to utilize skills, classes, and spells of six people to make them an effective team. So I would think that this player doesn't have enough experience with Baldur's Gate 3 because my team is really effective when I play. Um, in fact, the game is really kind of easy now that I've logged so much time into it. I'm, I'm excited for them to introduce different difficulty levels when the game actually comes out. So a lot of people say that it's uh, it's impossible to do good. It's simply not true. You just have to keep playing and understanding what the game offers in terms of tools for you to overcome challenges. There's quite a lot of them and some of them might be hidden to you. The next one star review says it gets one star from me because it's appalling that it has the audacity to try and tie itself into the greatest RPG series while having nothing to do with it. Once again, I think we're jumping the gun here. We don't know if it's going to have nothing to do with it. In fact, I would say almost positively that it's going to have something to do with it because Larian Studios has said that it will have ties to the original games. So this is just exaggerate language right here. It could have been named anything else and been a good game on its own, but instead it's attempting to piggyback off the success of better and more thought-provoking games. So, this person's admitting that it could be a good game on its own, but the text on the title is completely ruining their experience. Completely. Like, not just a little bit, completely. So I don't really quite understand that, that way of thinking, but you do you. But instead it's attempting to piggyback off the success of better and more thought-provoking games. So, this makes sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. This makes sense a little bit because the name Baldur's Gate is going to bring hype with it. But like I said, we don't know what the ties to the originals is going to be. And I'm happy that they went with the name Baldur's Gate 3 because it kind of ensures that we're probably going to get a quality game where a lot of money and time is put into it. You can't just get the name Baldur's Gate and put out a half-assed project. I think you have to actually have a really solid plan for a good game. Graphics are good, gameplay is good. I find regardless of how low my saving throws are, I always roll lower, meaning I spend a lot of time reloading the game. The early release makes this game totally not worth it. Okay, okay. You're, you're not meant for early access, makes sense. I feel better to have waited for the full version. Okay, I can respect that. Thanks for sharing your opinion on that. I will now forever question any and all Larian games based on the decision to do early access. So I think a lot of people that say this might be a little ignorant as to what early access can do for a company that really knows how to use it. Obviously companies have abused it in the past and they've used it as a way to monetize their project early. Then they don't listen to community feedback and it's just basically a, almost a scam in a way. Larian Studios has kind of proven themselves with the Divinity series that early access can really help the development of the game and especially in the crpg genre where there's so many things that can go wrong so i'm really excited that they did early access and we can see them listening to our feedback they're not necessarily creating the game that they specifically want and then don't care about what players are saying it seems like they actually care what we tell them and also larian keeps saying don't participate
participate in it if you don't want an unfinished game or if you don't want to burn out or if you just have any fears about it just don't buy it they've said this a million times so people that think like that the early access is the ultimate evil i think you don't really understand how it can be used in a really good way for a game like baldur's gate 3. they should not have released this game they, they didn't release it. It's an early access for only a certain amount of players that want to participate in a buggy game. I don't really like to play games in early access because it feels like you're play testing and looking for... Yes. So why are you... Why did you play early access, man? All right. Anyways, it seems almost all CRPGs recently have had bugs. RPG overall has been coming out with bugs. This makes me want to quit the whole genre overall until a clean game kindly... It's early access, man. Who cares? Don't play early access games. This is the stupidest review I've ever seen in my life. I'm still going to play this game when it is finally complete and hopefully fixed. Okay, there's a there's a good statement. But for now, this game deserves a one. Hope this inspires you developers to be better. No, it's not going to inspire anybody to do better. This is early access. Literally, there was going to be bugs. It's early development. Nobody's inspired to do better. Uh, initial releases, official game releases. Yes, games need to do better. An initial early access release one to two years before the game comes out is going to have bugs and problems. All right, we'll do a couple more quick ones and then I'm going to end the video. Wonderful graphics and huge potential, but too similar to DOS 2 and too far from BG. Okay. Turn to turn instead of real time fights. That's too bad. Yep, a lot of people do feel that way. Uh, I'm assuming they mean to say team of four instead of six. Yep, a lot of people really, really want six. That makes sense. No night and day clock. I really hope that this will change for the final version. Well, they're not going to be switching to real time with pause. At least that's what we've been told. Not sure about the day and night cycle. All right, on to the next one. Game is beautiful and has promise. That being said, buy it next year for half the cost when the actual game is available. Maybe. Paying $60 to play a five-hour game is a huge waste. Well, paying $60 to participate in early access is not for everyone, definitely, and may be considered a waste for some people as well. That's why you research what early access is before you do it. Playing a five-hour game. I'm not sure if this guy's part of the speedrun community or what, but you definitely didn't experience all the content. Not even close. Not even close. I'd say the average playthrough um, on my Discord server is probably 30 to 50, but then there's a lot of people that spent 75, 100 plus on one playthrough doing everything. And then there's people that have three to 400 hours of running other runs with characters and all that. So playing a five hour game means that he just rushed through it. I don't know what they did. I don't think you can even, I don't know. I have no idea. Loadings and save are absurd. Difficulty is also a problem. How do you progress if the mobs are full cheats? So, so yes. Some of the mobs are pretty difficult when you first start out. Um, I enjoy games that kick my ass in the beginning as long as there are tools to figure things out. And like I said, after you learn a little bit, um, a lot of the mobs and fights become like way easier, almost to a point of where you think you might have to up the difficulty when that becomes a possibility. So yeah, so the mobs are not full of cheats, really. I mean, there's some bugs with the mobs, but um, this player's got to learn a little bit more on how to play. Watch my channel. Watch my channel, Paco. You must begin again and again the same level because of the loads that said automatics rubbish deceptions i return to the paper rp f dot 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 k <laughs> this game looks good only looks good not fun and they ruin the Baldur's gate experience do not buy if you like playing fun games i would give zero stars but that's not an option all right this person doesn't like the game that's okay larian developers killed Baldur's gate a turn-based game really sorry but this is not Baldur's gate this is a bad salad of divinity original sin and dragon age the only good thing about the game is the price it's below a hundred dollars dang what country are you from i don't know if i've ever paid more than 60 70 dollars for a game i hate larian they always do this to me their combat system is so slow and boring i gave it a one instead of a two to help balance out all the fanboy girls glowing reviews and that will be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy this more freestyle, just talk about Baldur's Gate 3 type of video. It is nice changing up the style on this channel. Some of those reviews I thought um, were well done or just uh, opinions that you can't really argue with, while other ones seem to just jump the gun too fast. And then you got people that are just really angry and they let their emotion out in a comment. And then the comment just really doesn't come across as anything that anyone would take seriously. So anyways, I look forward to looking at more of these reviews as time goes on, especially when the game comes out if you guys like this type of video i'll do it for more games i guess um games that i feel like i know a lot about all right well uh yeah thanks for watching